Since many people have gone all jelly about my cap charger and have requested schematics, I finally decided to make a video about it. But before we go into the technical details, I'd like to go through the history of this charger. Like many other things, this charger is a culmination of almost two years of research and development. It all started in August 2016 after I'd finished Railgun version 1. I was looking for a cap charger that was small enough to fit inside the handle of a nerf gun but was still powerful enough to charge my caps in less than a second. So I came up with a design that used simple parts I had including the venerable triple five timer and the 358 op amp. In retrospect this was a naive approach to designing a flyback converter. What this is is a triple five oscillator with independently variable frequency and duty cycle so I could fine tune the system. This in retrospect caused a lot of grey hairs. The second triple five is a bistable latch that turns off the oscillator when the charging is done. This was a fancy feature inspired by the LT3750. I didn't want my charger to be turned on and off by a clunky high current switch. A latch simply oozed sophistication. The op amp here simply acts as a comparator and resets the flip flop and turns off charging. There are a lot of flaws with this design, especially the fact that there is no gate driver. This was my first soldering attempt on the charger and as you can see by the immature and negligent soldering that this was a long time ago. I also wanted a 3 LED interface, green to indicate power, blue to indicate charging and red to indicate a dangerous voltage on the caps. This was inspired by Clay Reed. The transformer was probably the most difficult part. I had no experience working with high frequency power transformers so the end results were nasty to say the least. So I decided to start with a clean slate and take the formal route and learn all the equations and proper procedure to design a flyback converter. Out of these efforts came my flyback design calculations video. The results this time were a lot more impressive with a 0.8 second charge time but one thing I didn't like was the nasty peak currents. This was because of me using a constant frequency. When the cap is initially at a low voltage, the secondary discharge time is high. I pumped more energy into the core at this time which led it to be highly discontinuous. With this new knowledge of secondary feedback, I decided to try again with a common switch mode controller but I couldn't get the system to work and that had to be abandoned. Once again I came up with a complex circuit using a feedback winding and a comparator to generate a blanking signal to prevent the triple five from turning on when the secondary was still discharging. And it didn't work. This time I gave up completely. My mind needed a rest from all this madness. I remembered at this time that I had something that could potentially be of help. This thread on the 4HV forum described an interesting circuit that had a secondary shunt, an unorthodox method that required the primary and secondary grounds to be coupled. I felt that this had the potential to work. I decided to try it and to my surprise it did. And that resulted in the final version of this cap charger. Now for the schematic. I have shown this before but for some reason people want me to mention the component values. I don't know why people think they can get away with replicating this and expecting it to work. In my humble opinion to get a working cap charger you need to put in some time and effort. Okay. This circuit can be broken down into a few blocks. First up, the oscillator. I've used the all weather triple five timer. This configuration gives you control over the on and off time independently through R9 and R11. The on and off times have been calculated through the formulas in my flyback video. Next up is the power block. This is standard flyback configuration with the exception of the shunt on the secondary. The capacitor ground is connected to the top of the shunt so cap ground and battery ground are isolated. The shunt resistor is connected to the input of the gate driver which feeds into the reset input of the triple five through an NPN. This turns off the output of the triple five whenever current is flowing through the secondary. The value of the secondary resistor controls how far the converter operates in discontinuous mode. A high value means less continuous and vice versa. This charger is Arduino controlled so there is no need for a comparator or a latch. It's turned on by a relay and the voltage is detected by a voltage divider on the cap charger. Whew, I think this has been the largest lecture I've given. I hope now you have some idea of what to do. Happy charging!